Hey, Monica Mean Jeff here, and I am going to try something. I'm going to try to start a little thread here. I've never successfully started a thread. I think I've tried maybe once or twice in the past. Um, but, you know, those might have been the early years, and I didn't have much traction there. But I'm going to try again now, mainly because of a couple albums I got in recently that kind of reminded me of this and gave me an idea. Uh, the, the band you may not as be familiar with, they're more on the underground side of things, mad at the world. They are a, they've been around since the late 80s and they went into the late 90s and fizzled out and then came back recently. But um, these were just reissued for the first time on vinyl. This is their 1991, and, uh, 90 and 91 album. And so these just came out. This is uh, Seasons of Love. This is Boomerang. California band by the brothers, the Rose brothers, Randy and Roger Rose. Um, Randy Rose has done a bunch of other solo stuff. I've shown they recently reissued some of his solo vinyl releases too. Um, and, you know, they, they've done a lot of musical stuff. And Randy Rose has done some recent albums. I've done Kickstarter program uh, support for that. So basically these albums, so Mad at the World, California band, in the late 80s, they put out two albums which were very synth pop, very electronica, uh, like dancey feel, you know, synth pop of the late 80s. Then in 1990s, they, 1990, they hit the scene with Season of Love and it became very alternative rock. Uh, people compare it to like the cult type thing, guitar driven, yet still, you know, melodic y type feel. Um, aggressive at times both randy and roger sing roger has a more melodic voice randy has a little more of a gritty voice at times randy almost sounds nah, maybe a little like danzig people say he sounds like you know like danzig when he sings so there's a little bit of that in here too so i was really thrilled that they came out on vinyl now the band like i said they had two band two songs two albums that were synth pop and then 91 92 and 93 the third, the, the, these two albums plus the one that followed uh, were very alternative rock. Now, the one that followed through the forest, uh, that was released on vinyl for the first time, like, I don't know, seven years ago or so. It, it came even, maybe even longer. It was a, I don't know why they jumped in, but they released that on vinyl quite a few years ago. Um, so these coming out finally on vinyl. So now we're looking forward to two, two albums that came after these three were very psychedelic uh less aggressive very uh less distortion quirky oh gosh i love those albums i'm hoping they continue on with those and put those out then the band like i said that in the late 90s disappeared and then in like 20 was it 2017 they got back together the two brothers put together a kickstarter and they released the album hope which was a great album and it kind of has more of a flair like the synth pop years i think I mean, it was they're, they're kind of going back, and they're supposed to be re-recording albums from that feel kind of like each era, and so they are. There's a new Kickstarter now where they work on that uh, on on a second album now. What like seven years later, I guess if I got my dates right. These finally did just come out though. Great stuff. And so what I want to do is I want to kind of start a thread here and see what you've got that uh, might compare. Actually, let's take a look at these items real quick, just in case you wanted to see them. Um, this is on blue. Kind of matches the cover there. And this is on yellow. So, anyway. Great releases. Got your typical lyrics and everything in here. So, what I want to do is, is a thread idea with... The idea of, I don't know, I've been coming up with all kinds of key ways to say this. Lyrics that cut, lyrics that make a difference, lyrics that say something, uh, lyrics that uh, impact, impactful lyrics. Now, we know a lot of bands write music. They write lyrics that are telling stories, and they can get really emotional. They can. They, there's all kinds of heartwarming stories. There's all kinds of, you know, heart-wrenching stories uh you know some of the songs of the 70s used to really still make me choke up and this is sort of along that line songs that say something that really stick with you or say something that's impactful and so there is a song on the boomerang album that these guys did 
1991 when this album came out that really it still is hard and i'm not even sure i'm gonna make it through this video because at one of the verses i have a hard time even saying the other thing i'm concerned about i guess if you're seeing this video it means that youtube did not take this video down yet because the words you know are there are some uh You'll see, uh, you know, I may have to go back and YouTube may require me to go back and censor it, but um, just because of the topic at hand. But so that's the thing. If you have a song like this that's impactful, that really says something, that really speaks to you, uh, that really makes a statement about something, that's a thread. Show me something like that. I'd love to see that. So in this case, and the thing that's cool about it is that in this case, the title, the chorus, is kind of a twist. It's kind of being used in a uh, ironic type way. It's not not surface level like you think. And of course, we're talking rock you now because the lighting is kind of bad in here. And even though I know these lyrics by heart, I'm gonna still use some glasses to read here. The song is on near the end of the album, and it's called. Isn't sex a wonderful thing? So, just the fact that I said that title may get me banned on YouTube, but we'll see. So, that's the course. Isn't sex a wonderful thing? So, here are the verses, and I'm going to explain a little bit about, you know, what they mean to me, uh, or how they, what they meant to me back in the day, and what they mean to me now. So, let's get into this, and, you know, hopefully I can make it through this without, you'll see, it's kind of tough. It says, three-letter word, it rules the earth I've heard. No, it's not love, L-U-V. <laughs> That's not what I'm thinking of. Husband and wife, together all their lives, till he chose her instead, because she's 18, sexy, and so good in bed. Isn't sex a wonderful thing? It, so it says that a couple times, and then it has like a, a last line. So it says, isn't sex a wonderful thing? Throw away your wedding ring isn't sex a wonderful thing. So for me, that always, you know, when I, when this came out in 91, I was, yeah, fairly nearly wet, five years. It's just one of those things that kind of impacts you and keeps you thinking about, you know, your wife and, you know, just the whole idea of fidelity and everything. So anyway, the second verse is the one. Let's see if we can make it through this. <clears throat> I know where we're going with this. Sorry. Uh, she had it all when she was very small. <laughs> Break. Mm. Let's try this again. She had it all when she was very small. No lack of love. No problems to speak of. As time went by, she caught her father's eye. <sighs> and every night as he would rape her, he would say, This means daddy loves you, honey. Yes, it's okay. Isn't sex a wonderful thing? Nothing sacred. It's a crying shame. Isn't sex a wonderful thing? Now, when this album came out in 91, I, was, I had a newborn son. No daughters. But the impact of the thought of these words and having a daughter and knowing... The abuse that goes on out there, it, 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 it really got me to the core. Since then, I've had three daughters, two of which have gotten engaged in the past month. One, like three days ago. One, a couple weeks ago. Um, the third one is on her way. She's actually with her, her fiancé, boyfriend now, and you know I'm sure they're going to be getting married soon too. So since this album came out, I've raised three daughters 
And this song constantly burns in my mind because I know how men can be and how the power of what goes on in our minds can be. And this has always kept me on the edge of sanity. You know, just you hear people going through this abuse and it's always kept me clear of ever even thinking of such a thing. Now, I've never had even a hint of a thought. It's never been a problem. I don't know what kind of mind it takes to do that to your own children, but this song, and every time I hear this song, it chokes me up. Anyway, anyway, I made it through that. Okay, last verse. Does anybody care about their purity, and is anybody sure what gender they should be? <laughs> That's kind of relevant today. And does anybody mind that God's been left behind? And here we are today where not too many people can honestly say, isn't sex a wonderful thing? Isn't sex a wonderful thing? Seems like the human race can ruin anything. Isn't sex a wonderful thing? So there you go. Lyrics that cut, lyrics that say something, lyrics that are impactful. What do you got? You got anything cool like that? You know, a lot of times it can be a sad song. It, it can just be something that really has spoke to you that's stuck in your mind that's very impactful, that says something that you think is very powerful. See what you got. Jump on if you like. I'd love to see this take off a little. love to see some impactful songs because we all know that a lot of music we listen to is very simple, very, very basic stuff about partying and stuff like that. So let's hear something with a little more impact. And I'll see you later. Rock on and rock hard.